Hi, so we do get some um, inquiries about uh, Zimmer Peacock pH sensors, and so we like to kind of make these video responses. The question tonight is, one of the questions is, um, what's the stability like of our pH sensor at pH three to five? So I can only really talk about the data that we have on the website. There's lots of data, um, and this is fairly representative of it, um, where we've, we've tested at pH two down to pH nine, to pH two, to pH nine, so we have, but it's worth saying that we've um, run this sensor for 1600 seconds, um, which you know is approximately half an hour. So um, we do understand that the question the question is probably asking you know for hours and hours worth of data, but unfortunately we only have the data that we have. Um, but it is also worth noting that we've actually increased the range um, of pH sensors, and so now we're kind of selling them in pack. Well, when I say increase the range, we make pH sensors that are on ceramics. And we now make pH sensors that are on flexible um, substrate. And we've got two of those on flexible substrate. We have the um, this pH sensor and the price base it reflects that we are able to manufacture this in higher volume and at lower cost because of the flexible material that we're using. And we also have this array um, of electrodes as well. So my recommendation is if you want to kind of really find out about a Zimmer Peacock sensor, I would definitely recommend, you know, like a pack of, um, let's say, 10 of these um, sensors. These are the ones that are on the um, PET um, flexible substrate. So that would be our recommendation. So the quick answer to that question is we've got about 30 minutes worth of data, but I can understand that the question is really asking, do we have hours and hours of data? And the answer is we don't. Um, now, these sensors um, are asked, you know, can we use it with sodium and potassium present? Obviously, you know, with things like phosphate buffer solution, which I understand that's not a complex medium, but, you know, we do have sodium and potassium in those, um, in the buffers, and they don't interfere with the pH sensor. Complex media, things like urine is not that complicated, really. Um, sweat is not that complicated. Um, I think the most complicated matrix is probably blood. Um, so I suspect that our pH sensors are fairly good in that, but we don't have on our website, um, lots of data for those kind of more complicated matrices. As I say, if um, the recommendation is, whoops a daisy, the recommendation is, um, I would actually go for these flexible guys because the price point kind of allows you to explore um, them, even break a few and it won't necessarily break the bank. Uh, yeah, you can reuse these sensors after washing so you could sort of rinse them down with DI water or a bit of buffer and um, dry them, put them aside, and they should be good. Um, how many bending cycles? So we, we haven't um, done that kind of testing. I understand the question, which is, um, you know, if you flex these things, how long does it take for the conducting tracks to kind of crack? Um, and we just haven't done that kind of um, testing. So I would sort of suggest again that if these... Um, if those are your kind of questions, then I would say, yeah, definitely try out this guy because I think in terms of price point, um, he allows a lot of R&D and a lot of characterization without um, being too expensive. Um, so I'm sorry we haven't been able to give um, a lot of um, detailed answers there, but I think we could sort of say that we've tested this thing for about 30 minutes at those kind of pHs. I'm really not expecting any problems with the sodium and potassium. Um, they're not just one-time use. You can just rinse them down and they're good to go. Um, and bending cycles. I definitely understand the question, which is, you know, can you flex it and crack the conducting tracks? Um, I think they're fairly robust, but you would, um, you would have to sort of try it out a few times. Um, so I'll post this online and we hope that's useful. If you've got any questions, regarding Zimmer and Peacock, um, please don't hesitate to contact us. Okay, thanks very much.